Hello, my lovelies. If you've ever seen your fish suddenly flashing, breathing rapidly, or covered in tiny white dots that look like grains of salt, you're likely dealing with one of the most feared parasites, but most common in the saltwater aquarium. There's a lot to cover when it comes to marine ick. So in this video, we're gonna serve as a solid overview of what to look for, how it spreads, and what your treatment options are. If you wanna go even deeper, check out my book, Marine Disease Diagnostics, a practical guide for aquarists. It's available now on mantisystems.net. It covers 16 of the most common saltwater fish diseases, including detailed treatments, protocols, medications, dosing, and prevention strategies to help you build a healthier, more resilient reef. So marine ick, also known as cryptocarin irritants, and it is perfectly named because it is very irritants. <laughs> That's like my best joke ever. All right. Unfortunately, it is very common. It is very stubborn and left unchecked, it can wipe out your entire tank. In this video, we're gonna break down what marine ick is, how it behaves, how to spot it early, how to tell it apart from its deadlier cousin, marine velvet. We'll also cover proven treatment options like copper and chloroquine phosphate, when to go fallow, reef safe methods that can help manage symptoms, and most importantly, how to prevent it from entering your tank in the first place. So let's get started. Let's start by understanding what marine ick actually is. It's a protozoan parasite that infects the gills, skin, and the fins of saltwater fish. The real danger of ick, those white spots are only a small part of the problem. Most of the time, ick is working invisibly in your system, and by the time you notice it, it has already spread. So let's touch quickly on symptoms so you know what to look for. Besides the classic white spots, you may also see scratching or flashing, rapid breathing or gasping, lethargy or hiding, loss of appetite, cloudy eyes, or even fin erosion in advanced stages. Fish don't always show every symptom. Some might only flash, while others might look totally fine until things get really severe. Observation is your best defense. Catching it early can make a huge difference. So let's go through the four stages. Understanding each stage and how long it lasts is the key to timing your treatments effectively and breaking the cycle. Stage one is called the trophin stage. This is the part you can actually see on the fish, the white spots on the body, fins, and gills. During this time, the parasite is burrowing into the skin and feeding on your fish's tissues. It's causing damage, weakening the fish, and preparing for reproduction. This stage typically lasts three to seven days, depending on the tank's temperature. After feeding, the parasite drops off the fish and enters the next phase. This is really important to understand because a lot of people say, oh, I saw some spots on my fish, and then a few days later, well, now they're gone. You caught the end of that first phase of the life cycle, and now we're on to the next. So that phase is called the protomont. This is a short transitional stage. The parasite detaches from the fish and swims around for a few hours looking for a place to settle. It's not effective during this time, and it doesn't stay in the stage for very long, usually just two to 18 hours. Once it finds a surface, it attaches and becomes a torment. So that's the third stage, and this is where things get serious. The torment forms a protective cyst on hard surfaces on your tank, like rock, glass, frag plugs, and even equipment. Inside that cyst, it begins to divide. One parasite can become hundreds. This stage lasts anywhere between three and 28 days, though most commonly around seven to 10 at reef temperatures. This is also the stage where treatments like copper won't work. The cyst is sealed off from the water, making it untouchable, which is why treatments have to last long enough to catch the parasite after it reemerges. Finally, we reach stage four, the theront. These are the free swimming juvenile parasites that hatch out of the cysts and go searching for a new fish to infect. This is the only stage where it is both infective and vulnerable to treatment. Therons are active for six to 24 hours, and if they don't find a host, they die. That is your window for copper, chloroquine, and UV sterilizers to take them out. So to recap, visible white spots means you're in the trophin stage. No visible signs doesn't mean the parasite is gone. It could be insisted as a torment or hiding in your rocks ready to release hundreds of new attackers. That's why we emphasize long treatment times and full fallow periods. The life cycle is built for persistence, but if you understand how each stage lasts, you can outlast it. So here's where things get tricky. 
Marine ick is often confused with marine velvet, which is caused by a different parasite, Amlodinium ocellatum. Both diseases can present with flashing, labored breathing, and a dusty or spotty appearance. But here's how to tell the difference. Marine ick typically appears as larger, salt-sized grained white dots scattered across the body and fins. In contrast, marine velvet often shows up as a fine golden or dusty coating that can make the fish look slightly dull or slightly discolored. So when I first started, it was really difficult for me to distinguish between marine velvet and marine ick, but it's really important that we identify correctly because they do have very different treatment options. Sometimes the easiest way for beginners to identify between the two is simply the number of spots that they see. This isn't a foolproof way, but it can help. So for me, if there are less than 20 spots, I often think it is probably ick. And if there are more, I often think it is probably velvet. Velvet also progresses much, much faster, sometimes killing fish in 24 to 72 hours of symptoms onset, while ick tends to follow a slower, more cyclical pattern. Velvet attacks the gills aggressively, so if fish is gasping at the surface with no visible spots, I often suspect velvet first. For ick, the progression is usually slower and the fish may continue eating, especially early on in the infection. So how do you treat marine ick? First, let's be clear, there are no reef safe options that fully eliminate ick from the tank with fish, corals, and invertebrates present. To truly eradicate it, you need to remove all the fish to a separate quarantine system and let the fish tank go fallow, for, which means fish free for six to eight weeks. Now I am gonna cover some reef safe options towards the end of the video, but first I'm gonna go after our proven treatments. First up is copper. Now there's a couple different brands out there such as Copper Power or Cooperman. Make sure you're following the instructions on the bottle because there are different instructions based on if it's a chelated or a non-chelated formula and also find out the right test kit that you need. Depending on the different formulas, not all test kits test them effectively. Make sure you're maintaining your copper for at least 14 days and always test daily with reliable test kits. Next up is chloroquine phosphate, an effective alternative for copper that's often easier on sensitive species like tangs and angelfish. Make sure you dose carefully and use these only in bare bottom quarantine tanks. Chloroquine phosphate can be difficult to source and it often requires a prescription from a vet. The third is a tank transfer method. This is a chemical free option that involves transferring fish between sterile tanks every three days for 12 days. This breaks the life cycle before the parasite can reattach. It's great for ick, but it doesn't work for velvet. So again, we need to know what we're looking at. And our fourth option is hyposalinity, which means lowering the salinity in your quarantine tank to treat marine velvet. This method involves dropping salinity to around 1.009 specific gravity. Make sure you're always using a calibrated refractometer. At this level, the osmotic pressure becomes too high for the ick parasite to survive, especially during the free swimming and insisted stage. When done properly, hyposalinity can be just as effective as copper, but only for marine ick. It does not work for other parasites like marine velvet or uronema. So it's very important to confirm what you're dealing with before relying on this method. Again, there's a whole article on hyposalinity on mantisystems.net if you want a more in-depth view or instructions. Now, when completing your quarantine treatment, remember your tank needs to go fallow, which means no fish for six weeks, not just one fish or well, I'll just purchase some new fish while my fish are finishing quarantine. Going fallow is the only way to ensure it dies out in your reef. So let's talk about some of those reef safe medications. We've all been there. We have ick in our display tank and we can't get the fish out without tearing down the entire tank. So let's talk about some of those options and things you can do in your display tank to manage symptoms while your fish are still present. Here's the truth. None of these products have ever been scientifically proven to fully eliminate marine ick from a display tank. They might reduce symptoms temporarily, they might knock down a light outbreak, but they won't break the life cycle of ick the way copper, chloroquine phosphate, hyposalinity, or tank transfers can. So I'm gonna talk about the most popular one that I know of, which is Kick Ick by Ruby Reef. This product contains herbal and organic extracts and claims to disrupt the parasite's life cycle. It's marketed as reef safe and invertebrate safe. Some hobbyists report minor improvements in fish behavior, 
but peer-reviewed evidence is lacking. And many aquarists see the infection return after treatment ends, but some hobbyists swear by it, so it might be one of those worth trying if you don't have other options. I personally have used it before, and I have had success in minor outbreaks. And I'm sure there's a lot of other options out there that I personally haven't tried that might be worth looking into. There are a few other things you can do that will not eliminate ick, but may reduce its impact. The first is UV sterilizer. Again, this can help by killing that free swimming stage in the water column. This works best with properly sized, slow flowing units and clear water. Another option is feeding immune boosting foods such as garlic or beta glucans. They may help support fish immunity, but they don't kill the parasite. There is no scientific proof that garlic helps, but many hobbyists swear by it, so you do you. I would always recommend that you maintain stable water parameters, which will help reduce stress, which is key to limiting outbreaks. And some people like dosing bottled bacteria or probiotics. While not proven to fight ick directly, they may improve overall microbial diversity and fish health. Again, these are management tools, not cures. They won't eliminate the parasite, but they can help keep fish comfortable while you prepare proper treatment or buy time in mild cases for them to recover on their own. So how do you keep marine ick out of your tank to begin with? Quarantine. Make sure you're quarantining every new fish. Give them a 30 day in a separate tank and observe for signs of disease. If you're importing fish from a store that doesn't run copper or chloroquine, assume they've been exposed. Use dedicated tools for your quarantine and display tanks to avoid cross contamination. Keep your parameters stable, minimize aggression in the tank and avoid sudden changes in salinity and temperature. If you wanna know more about quarantining, again, we have an amazing article on mantisystems.com that goes over our entire quarantining process. Let's wrap up with a few real world pro tips to help you outsmart ick. Number one, white spots may come and go. Ick hasn't disappeared. It's just in a different stage. Number two, Two, copper only works if you maintain proper levels. Make sure you test every single day. Number three, chloroquine phosphate is great, but sensitive to light and hard to source. Make sure you're storing it properly. Number four, if one fish has it, assume all of your fish are exposed and treat them all together in quarantine. Number five, a fallow tank is your best weapon. It's time consuming, but it works. Number six, don't rely on reef safe products alone if you can help it. They're management tools, but not cures. Number seven, if your fish are breathing hard with no spots, consider velvet, treat immediately. Number eight, build your quarantine system before you need it. Being prepared saves lives. Marine ick is one of the most frustrating challenges in the saltwater hobby, but it's also one of the most manageable once you understand the life cycle and commit to a plan. Whether you're building a new tank or battling an outbreak right now, knowledge is your best defense. Well, that's our video. If you're a reader and you want even more details on any of the topics mentioned today from quarantine techniques, copper protocols, chloroquine phosphate usage, uh, hyposalinity, or even a deeper dive into marine ick, we have more than 130 article topics you can find on our website at mantisystems.net. I'm gonna link that below. And yes, I'm gonna plug my book yet again if you are looking for a deeper dive into any of the diseases. Like, subscribe, and stay tuned for our next video recommendation to dig into even more reefing topics. And as always, happy reefing.